do voters have a right to know the health issues of their president or of presidential candidates? And the entire inauguration itself only lasted 900 seconds. But Vice President Henry Wallace here did something that no vice president has done since then. But what we didn't know was that the Roosevelt White House was keeping a secret from the American people. It's January 20th, 1945. Overcast skies, very bitterly cold day. It's a 40th U.S. presidential inauguration. It's the only time a U.S. president was inaugurated for a fourth term. The president's speech that day only lasted five minutes. It was the second shortest speech behind George Washington's. And the entire inauguration itself only lasted 900 seconds. That's 15 minutes. You know, that day there was no inaugural parade, no marching bands, no parade floats, no concerts, no inaugural balls. The inauguration was held on the south lawn of the White House, on the south portico, and not the U.S. Capitol. The outgoing vice president, Henry Wallace. Now, this is the vice president that the president had replaced on his ticket during the election. But Vice President Henry Wallace here did something that no vice president has done since then, and that is he administered the oath of office to his successor, Harry Truman. How awkward is that? Why was everything canceled that day? And why do we have a bare bones inauguration? Well, the Roosevelt White House said they didn't think it was appropriate to have a typical inaugural celebration during time of war. You see, at this time, the United States was still in World War II, about three years in, and we were rationing and trying to preserve, and the whole idea of spending the $25,000 that had been appropriated by the U.S. Congress for the inaugural just didn't seem right. Uh, the, the Roosevelt White House also said, you know, there were security concerns as well of, of bringing a massive amount of, of people to the inauguration and really could pose a, a real security threat, certainly during time of war. And so all of those were valid reasons for a scaled down inaugural. But what we didn't know was that the Roosevelt White House was keeping a secret from the American people. They've been keeping a secret going back to the, the previous election of 1944. You see, during the election of 1944, we didn't know about Franklin Roosevelt's declining health. One clue should have been that he didn't even attend the Democratic Convention of 1944. He gave his acceptance speech via the radio. He said, I shall not campaign in the usual sense for the office. In these days of global warfare, I shall not be able to find the time. And really stated that he was just too busy being commander in chief to really go out and campaign in the, the same typical fashion. But the truth of the matter was, he wouldn't have been able to campaign like he had previously. He had lost a great deal of weight. He had congestive heart failure. He had dangerously high uh, blood pressure, a heavy smoker. There were people that talked about him falling asleep in mid-conversation. And we know that in 1944, the White House cut back his working hours to just four hours a day just to preserve his energy. Was the cover-up justifiable? Well, in their minds, it was. We were in a time of war. We were still in the Great Depression, and they didn't want to allow Roosevelt to look weak and ineffective. Former First Lady Edith Wilson was present at this inauguration. She said she was frightened when she saw Franklin Roosevelt in person. She said he was frail, he was pale, his hands were trembling, he had a very weak voice. And she said and remarked that he looks exactly as my husband did when he went into his decline. James Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt's oldest son that day, told his father he looked bad. And the truth of the matter is that Franklin Roosevelt, given his health, would not have been able to make it through a day's inaugural festivities. Those are really the real reasons. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt suggested that her husband had a premonition that he wasn't going to be living much longer. He insisted that all 13 grandchildren be present that day. And he had grandchildren that ranged from ages 2 to 18. Also know that Franklin Roosevelt that day discussed his will with James Roosevelt, as well as 
other instructions for his funeral, oddly enough. Two days after this inaugural, Franklin Roosevelt departed on a grueling five-week trip overseas in which he went to the Yalta Conference there to negotiate and discuss post-war Europe with Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin. There are many historians that suggest that Franklin's poor health did not allow the United States to be as effective during these negotiations and these talks given his health. And some 82 days after the inaugural, Franklin Roosevelt suddenly passed away on April the 12th, 1945, at the age of 63, and died from a, having a severe brain aneurysm. I'd be interested in knowing what you think. Do you think Franklin Roosevelt should have run for a re-election in 1944? Do you think he put his country before his political ambition? Or do you think it was the other way around? And really, the bigger question is, do voters have a right to know the health issues of their president? or? of presidential candidates. I'd really be interested in knowing what you think about these thoughts. Put your thoughts and your comments in the section below. If you like what you watched today, hit the like button for us and check out our other videos on our channel. If you want to become a member of our Prez Politics family, hit the subscribe button now.